This question is from Harsh from Agra. Namaskaram Sadhguru. It has taken nearly three decades to resolve the Ram Janma dispute. With Ram Mandir Bhumi Puja just days away, there is a lot of excitement in Ayodhya. Even though Ram was a king, why is he worshipped even today? I want to understand how Ram is relevant in today's times. <laughs> well, uh, because he is from Agra, he is calling him Ram. Where we are from, we call him Rama. So we will not give up that uh, in case somebody just forgets that I am South Indian, because looking at my name, some people think I am a Punjabi. <laughs> my name and my <laughs> name and my main, both, they think I must be a Punjabi. No, no, we call him Rama. I won't go further down to Tamil Nadu and call him Raman, then people will be confused. They may be think that I am talking about somebody else. Rama. See, this is the beauty of this culture, that there is no the God. There are qualities that we recognize as divine. If some human being displays that, we bow down to him, because we are bowing down to the quality, not to the person. This is something that most of the world will not understand because they have been psyched with very dogmatic religions. What is God, what is devil, what is man, what is woman, everything is clearly defined. In India, nothing is defined because, you know, I told you, Masala, everything is like that, always evolving, always things happening. This costs a lot of life and energy to keep yourself disorganized and still move in one direction. But this is like a, a swarm of uh, starlets or like a swarm of bees. They, it looks like they're going nowhere, but they're always going somewhere, they know where they're going. But for an outside observer, it looks like they're going nowhere. So you must understand this. Ram or Rama, is from Ayodhya, which is where the temple construction is happening because it's his birthplace. The temple is few thousand years old, nobody knows exactly, first temple what age it came up, then developments happened, developments happened over millennia. But about five hundred years ago, it was demolished, systematically lot of temples were demolished upon which other religious places were built with the same, using the same construction material, pull down this and build something else out of it. So, Rama being an icon, you must understand, he is an icon, not a god. Because we did not call him a god, we called him Marya the Purush, Purushottam, that means an elevated man, the very word Purushottam means an elevated man. Rama is always referred to as Purushottama. That means among the men, he is above them because he is so elevated. What is so elevated about him? Well, he went through trials and tribulations, I will not go through the whole works, but series of disasters, serial disaster is life. He loses his kingdom, loses his wife, has to fight a war, then comes back, again loses his wife, loses his children, almost killed his children, endless number of disasters. Through all this, he goes through peacefully, blissfully, pain, but still blissful. On one level, on a personal level, he has much pain which he expresses, but he never allows that pain to make any decisions about anything that he is doing. Well, when a man acts like this, we say he is Purushottama, because he is Uttama means an elevated one among the men. 
It's very important that he's a man. He was born in Ayodhya and died at a certain age and went through all this life, traveled through Indian geography, coming down to south and again going back to north. After having killed his adversary, a man who kidnapped his wife and was living and ruling wantonly after killing him, he comes back and goes into a year of repentance. So his brother asks, are you crazy? This is the worst kind of guy, you had to kill him. And now you want to repent, what does it mean? Did we all do wrong? So Rama said, see, there are many negative things about this Ravana. But he was a great devotee and he was a great administrator of his kingdom. He exploited everybody else for which I had to kill him. But he was a great devotee. For that I am repenting that I killed a devotee. Well, this man needs to be emulated. And it's very important that he is a man. If he becomes a god, you'll hang him on the wall and forget about him. Nobody tries to ever emulate a god, you must understand this. God means is beyond emulation. That is the idea of human mind. A man means, if he's doing really wonderful, naturally there is an aspiration in everybody, why can't I be like this? So it's extremely important that he is a man, he was a king, he lost his kingdom and again came back and walked away from all the wealth and pomp of his kingdom just because somebody else was upset. His stepmother was little upset and she was doing little kuchu kuchu behind his back. She said, if this what you want, I will leave. Well, this man needs to be emulated. When people are hanging on to power like crazy today, no matter what, even if they lose the election, they don't want to go. At a time like this, emulating Rama is very, very, very important. So why is this temple important? The temple is important because in many ways, at least in the northern part of the country, in south, uh, not so much, it is very much there but not so much. But in the north, Rama is their spirit. And five hundred years ago, when foreign invaders from Turkey and some from Mongolia later on, they came, and they systematically went about destroying all the temples, which were ancient temples built long time ago, which was the fundamental force for that society, and put up whatever they wanted to put up hurriedly on top of it. This dispute has been raging. This dispute has been in the court for, I think, if I'm correct, about 135 years since the British era. It has been in the court and going on and on and on. Because we have developed a certain kind of wanting to be politically correct at any cost, unfortunately, in the country, no judge has been wanting to take a call on it. Everybody is pushing it so that his term is over, let the next one handle the trouble. Because uh, two communities are fiercely contesting as to whose property is it. But now the Supreme Court, after a, lo a long process of nearly three to four decades in the Supreme Court, it's been going on. Now it came to a conclusion, looking at all the proof, clearly, archaeological proof, clearly, clearly more than hundred percent, it suggests that there was a temple and it was pulled down, uh, hurriedly they put up a building on top of it. Uh, so they said, this must be built as temple. For the other community, they gave, allotted another piece of land close by, within twenty miles or I mean twenty kilometers or something like that. They said, you build your place there, let them build their place here. So it is not just another temple, it's a resurrection of India's spirit. Because it is not just one particular denomination or religion who looks up to Ram. There's a whole lot of people, whole lot of uh, people who belong to other religions who also want to emulate him, who also 
elogize him in many, many ways. So in many ways, Ram, Ramayan, the story of Ram has been so much a part of Indian ethos. So it is almost like a resurrection of a damaged national spirit. So uh, I think it's a good thing it's happening because uh, otherwise unnecessary hatreds against other communities will continue with this resolution, a whole lot of minds and hearts are cooler, which is a good thing for the future of the nation and unnecessarily frictions going on endlessly between two communities. So I think one major problem has been settled. So on 5th of August, they're laying the foundation stone and they're planning to build a grand temple, probably in record time because in the last twenty-five, thirty years, I think, they have uh, carved all the pillars, you know, the columns, this, that, everything, whatever the stone part of the work, stone work part has been all kept ready, stored somewhere else and they will just have to assemble that. The rest of the structure should come up pretty fast. Hopefully, in twenty-four months or thirty months, this grand temple will be up. And uh, because of the virus situation, they have sent out only hundred and fifty invites. Otherwise, probably ten million people would be there, ten to twelve million people would be there for this opening of the temple or even foundation laying, but only hundred and fifty invites are uh, <laughs> sent out. So rest is uh, being live telecast, people can see it on the television or maybe it's webcast, I don't know. So uh, I think it's... I think it's a landmark in terms of resolving disputes which continue for a long time, unnecessarily festering in a society like a wound. I think it should cool down many people. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now that you ask Ram question, hmm? Ye tiru gananu daya chuchadava inavam shottam rama Ye tiru gananu daya chuchadava inavam shottam rama Nataramā bhava sāgara mīdhanu nalina dhalekshana rāma Nataramā bhava sāgara mīdhanu nalina dhalekshana rāma Shri Raghunandhana Sita Ramana Stritajana Poshak Rama Shri Ragunandhana Sita Ramana Stritajana Poshak Rama Karunyalaya Bhaktavaradhaninu Kannadikanupurama Karunyalaya Bhaktavaradhaninu Kannadikanupurama Krura karma mulu Neraka chesiti Nera mulencha kurama Krura karma mulu Nera kache siti Nera mulencha kurama Dhari dhriyamu Pariharamu seyave Daivashikamani rama Dhare dhriyamu pariharamu seyave 
धैवशिका मणि राम वासवनुथ रामदास पोषक वंदन मयोध्य राम वासवनुत रामदास पोषक वंदन मयोध्य राम धासार्चित माकभय मुसंघ वे धाशरती रघु राम धासार्चित माकभय मुसंघ वे धाशरती रघु राम 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 These qualities of Rama, if we have to encapsulate it, his passion for the well-being of his people was limitless to a point of self-sacrifice, which is uh, elogized in so many ways through Ramayana. So essentially, absolute passion for everything, total dispassion for myself, this is what he encapsulates. I think uh, this is a quality all human beings need to emulate, no matter where they are. Laris is testing you to see how dispassionate are you about are you about yourself and how passionate are you about every other life. Laris is checking. No way to escape, you know. You can't bully yourself out of it. This happened in Texas. An officer from the FBI, uh, because they were suspecting people may be growing illegal, some time ago, illegal, when it was still illegal to grow marijuana, illegal drugs they're growing and making money out of it. So an officer came to a ranch, we're an old man over seventy years of age, but very fit and hard-working man. And he said, I want to come and check your ranch, if you're growing any illegal plants, which are hallucinogenic. Ah, the old-timer said, uh, no, we're not growing anything like that, we just have cattle and this and that, but no illegal something. No, no, I need to check. He said, uh, okay, you're free to check wherever you want, except that one place he showed a patch of land and he said, just don't go there. <laughs> so the officer got livid. You telling me where I should go and where I should not go? Do you know who I am? And he pulled out his badge, to the FBI, I am FBI. I'm a senior investigator. You telling me where I should go and where I should not go, with this badge I can go wherever I want to go. The old timer said, okay, I'm sorry, you can go wherever you want to go. Then after some time, he heard, the rancher heard wild, desperate cries. 
Then from the direction where that patch of land was, then he looked and he saw the officer running crazies for his life with this super stud bull chasing him. <laughs> then the old man ran to the fence, stood on the fence pole and he said, show him the badge, show him the badge. <laughs> Please, uh, don't flash your entitlements in the face of the virus, it's non-discriminatory. <laughs>